Good morning, everyone. Uh, first, before starting, I would like to thank the Institute of Directors uh, for inviting me. It's a great pleasure for me to be here today to introduce you to Graphene or to explain a bit more about what we're doing at the University of Manchester. Um, about being brave, well, yeah, I guess I was brave to take on an engineering degree and heavily male dominated. So I hope at the end of this talk, I would. Um, make you want your daughters or I don't know somebody you know to take an engineering degree because I think it's a great great degree and there is a lot of things that you can do with this and it's not all about men and uh, mechanics and trucks you can do actually a lot of things with it so okay let me start so I'm Anya Servant and I'm a knowledge exchange fellow at the National Graphene Institute what is it, Knowledge Exchange Fellows? We try to develop, to push for commercialization of graphene-based projects, and this is a big challenge at the moment. And we want, because graphene, as you all know, has been developed, isolated in Manchester, we want great projects to be developed as well in Manchester, rather than going away to China and so on. So I'm going to explain to you what, what first what graphene is and what all the great properties it entails, and also, what we're trying to do, to do and develop at the University of Manchester. So, first of all, graphene. Um, graphene is an extraordinary material that has been isolated by two physicists at the University of Manchester that now has been uh, awarded with the Nobel Prize and in 2004. So, what is graphene? Graphene is first the thinnest imaginable material. It's one atom thick, one atom of carbon thick. So, Beyond that, you can't find anything as material. So this, in first, is extraordinary. It's also being proved uh, theoretically the strongest material ever. So it's 3,000 times stronger than steel. So as you can imagine, you can hold, as uh, the image suggests, an elephant under the tip of a pencil, and it will not uh, tear up. It conducts electricity within no limit, so it has a great electrical conductivity, and I will explain what, um, how we can use that. And also, it has been demonstrated, is the most impermeable material, so even the smallest atom of helium cannot go through, so it's the most impermeable material, and again, there's a lot of application that comes back from that. So, in terms of properties, what does this what does all mean? First of all, the 2D aspect, the two-dimensional aspect of this material. So it's, you can imagine like a sheet of paper, even thinner, it's one atom thick, so you can't even see it, but it's like a sheet of paper, basically. So it has a great surface area, and what it means, all the atoms of carbon that are on the surface are very active, so we can functionalize it, we can use them, we can exploit them. And the direct application that comes out of this is sensing. So you can develop with that biosensors and sensing that are really extremely sensitive. And in the healthcare sector, you can imagine new diagnostic agent, new diagnostic instrument. Optical, yes, graphene is transparent. Actually, it absorbs a lot. It absorbs 2.3% of light. And for one atom thick, um, material is quite a lot but because it's so thin you can get away with it so it appears transparent so you can't see it if it's coated on that uh, table you will not be able to see it so it's transparent and also as I mentioned before very strong so you can use it to reinforce materials or composite so again in the aerospace sector or automotive sector you can imagine new cars with graphene incorporated composite and make them stronger so that's one of the application and chemical because all the atoms at the surface are active you can use any type of chemistry with it so if uh, some people here are chemists you can use any type of chemistry so uh, it's very uh, processable and easily functionable so you can attach drug in it and use it as a drug delivery um, vector so that's one as well of the application of graphene so what application can come out of it? Well, because of the great electrical conductivity, you can, uh, you can imagine like uh, great communication, great mobility. So then uh, why not be able to download or upload a terabit material in just a second? 
and also energy storage, which is one of the key applications of graphene. So being able to develop new um, batteries and supercapacitor, be able to charge your phone in five seconds. But the one that is less um, known, so to speak, is the biomedical application of graphene. So because it's very electrical, electrically conductive, you can reinvent, redesign polymeric implant that can connect straight to your neuron and, for instance, um, allow somebody that lost the use of the of their limb to be able to walk again just by co reconnecting those neurons and those pathways, electrical pathways that are being lost. So this is one of the key applications of graphene and, to my opinion, very promising. So how do we make graphene? So that is one of the big challenge is to, to date, there is no, nobody can uh, produce a large quantity of graphene. And there is to date a lot of different way of producing graphene leading to different type of material with different um, properties. So that's one of the challenge. So like all nanomaterial, there is two different approach. There is the bottom up, so when you take a small element, so basically atom of carbon, and you join them together to form a sheet of graphene. So this is a bottom up approach. And there is few industrial now technique that use this approach to create a monolayer of graphene. The one that is mostly used is a top down. So you go from a big element and you break it, break it, break it until obtaining graphene. So in that case, it's graphite. You take graphite, which is a lot of stack of graphene sheets stack all together, and you exfoliate, exfoliate, exfoliate until you obtain one sheet of graphene. And this is a technique that the two Nobel Prize have used. So they used a sticky tape, took a pe uh, pencil tip, and then exfoliate the pencil tip until observing just one monolayer of graphene. So as I explained, CVD graphene over there is one of the bottom-up applications. So this technique allows you to produce until a kilometer square of monolayer of graphene onto any type of substrate. So initially, you obtain the monolayer of graphene on copper, and then you can transfer it to any type of substrate, glass, quartz, silicon oxide, and you obtain your monolayer on, on your substrate. This technique to date is the best to obtain relatively high quality of graphene. But um, as you can expect, when you transfer uh, graphene onto the substrate you want, you can induce defect, cracks, all hole and um, wrinkles, and that will damage, um, um, that will reduce the, the properties of graphene. So that is one of the problems. The other technique is, as I mentioned before, coming from graphite. So you take graphite and then you use chemistry on it to uh, exfoliate it. So basically, uh, you can obtain graphene oxide, which is the little brother of graphene, which is exactly the same as graphene, a monolayer uh, of uh, atom of carbon, but this material has been oxidized. So what it means is like there are atom of carbon on the surface rather than just carbon. And this... Um, the material is not exactly the same as graphene because the presence of atom of oxygen onto the surface of graphene is seen as defect. So it will interrupt the electrical uh, conductivity. So this material is less electrically conductive than the big brother graphene. But for um, applications such as healthcare or um, biomedical application, this one is the material of choice because it's soluble in water. So you can mix it with uh, in aqueous or biological media and then you can use it for your application. From graphene oxide, you can come back into reduced graphene oxide. So you basically, you use again chemistry and you remove all the atom of carbon and you go back to graphene. I say, Graphene, because it's not exactly the same, uh, because it's been um, used in uh, so much chemical process, it has defects. So again, this material is less perfect as a reduced quality compared to graphene that you will um, obtain with the CVD. So to summarize, as you can see, there is different type of graphene with different type of quality and meaning price as well. So. To date, still, the mechanical exfoliation, which is the technique that was used by the two Nobel Prize, so with the sticky tape, is the best way to obtain a perfect, defectless 
graphene. But as you can imagine, this technique allows you or enables you to uh, produce a micron scale uh, size of graphene, which is not at all suitable for industry because it's very time consuming to assemble all those pieces of graphene together and to create a larger sheet. So, no, this is not definitely not good for make, um, ap uh, industrial application, but fortunately, research um, um, has occurred and a lot of other ways uh, could be um, optimized for the production of graphene. So CVD graphene, as I mentioned before, um, is one of the techniques used uh, in the industry. And especially, probably you have heard Samsung in Korea has invested a lot of money into this technique to develop mobile phone, flexible watch, flexible uh, TV screen, and so on, so for digital application. So this is one of the promising techniques. Still, there is problem with that one. You still have defects. And for such a sensitive area like electronics, flexible electronics, the quality of graphene is still not enough to be able to produce or to commercialize this material. And that's why still now you can't see um, uh, graphene-based product well in electronics and flexible electronics. There are some other ones that I will explain later. So liquid phase exfoliation. This technique has been developed in Dublin, Dublin by the professor uh, Johnny Coleman. And this technique is basically was um, heavily advertised because it's a very simple way to, you, to, to obtain graphene. So basically, you take graphite, you put it in the appropriate solvent, and you mix it very hard, and it will exfoliate spontaneously to give you a sheet of graphene. So basically, that's what we call the technique with the kitchen blender. So basically, you can produce graphene with a kitchen blender. You just put graphi graphite in the good solvent, and you have graphene. Well, it's not that easy. It's not that true. Um, so um, basically, what you obtain with that technique is um, not exactly monolayer. You have some monolayer, but they're not all monolayer. So you have bilayer, trilayer graphene, which is still good for some application, but electronics and so on. No, not really. But this technique allows you to produce relatively um, large scale of graphene, and when you mix it with a composite, so a polymer to form a composite, it does improve the electrical conductivity and the mechanical conductivity. So this graphene is very um, important, and a lot of industries such as aerospace, automotive, and so on, they are very interested in using it because it's still very good. Those are all the techniques, but they're, they're very good to produce graphene, so the silicon carbide and molecular assembly, but those are really interested scientifically, so fundamental, fundamental science, but industry, we can't apply it, it's too expensive and time consuming. So, with those different types of uh, graphene, you can see there is different type of application. So with CVD graphene, it's especially good for flexible electronic, digital, mobile phones, so Samsung and so on. Um, they invested a lot of money for CVD graphene. You can use it as well as a coating, so a barrier coating, because I mentioned to you is very um, impermeable, so you can protect your devices and so on. Platelet, so it's the one with the kitchen blender, so you have graphene into a solution, so you can mix it with a polymer and obtain a composite. So again, structural composite to improve mechanical strength and so on. So uh, solar cell, devices, food packaging as a uh, barrier coating, all of this uh, can be uh, used and can exploit graphene and also energy storage. And that's a key application in the University of, of Manchester, developing, developing battery and supercapacitor with higher um, uh, capability. And geo, this is more for healthcare. So smart materials, smart delivery vectors, smart system, and, um, and so on. So you can use it in a lot of sectors in biomedical and membrane. So University of Manchester, a lot of um, effort has been put in the research of graphene. And I would like to emphasize that it's not only physics, it's all across the university to date, there is 200 researchers working on graphene across all the disciplines, uh, physics, material science, life science, and chemistry, all dedicated in um, exploring new properties of graphene, new application, and commercialization. Commercialization is a big part of our activities. We have spin-outs coming out from the uh, 
it intellectual properties uh, that we acquired uh, in graphene and we also have a center for doctoral training so for to train new phds um, in graphene research with multi um, disciplinary skills and well equipped to tackle the world of commercialization and innovation so this is the national graphene institute it has opened now you can come and visit it um, so it was open in march where uh, um, the right honourable George Osborne came and opened it uh, with our um, president, uh, Professor Dam, Nancy Rothrell. So now it's working, we moved in. It's a 61 million building, uh, partly funded by the European Union, partly funded by UK government. And this uh, is a building with massive amount of laboratory space, state of our instrument to push for the commercialization of graphene based projects in collaboration with industry. So what we want is to work together with industry to push for validation, proof of concept studies, and eventually commercialization. So here, this is the work of the university research, blue sky science, low TRL, technology readiness level. What we want to do with the NGI is to push it towards the higher TRL level with collaboration with industry, which is crucial. We want to meet uh, all the, the needs of industry and it's only by working hand to hand that we can achieve this. So again, I emphasize collaboration with the NGI and with the academic. Now you might have heard there is another 60 million building coming, um, partly UK government, partly private sector. And this building, which is called the GEEK, the Graphene Engineering and Innovation Center, is to push for the further um, higher TRL level and development of graphene-based projects. So if you see R&D, NGI is a big R, still academically focused, academically led and research proof of concept development, while the geek is a big D, so development, um, um, upscaling, validation of process in equipment and, and production, and this is going to be industry-led, so we look for partners, and we already have some few partners, such as BAE system and so on. So again, we want to work with everybody, so not only large company, we want to work with SME startups, micro, nano company, and really to try to push for the commercialization of graphene bag products and to uh, contribute to UK growth and job creation. So again, working hand to hand, industry and academics all together. And that's part of my role, knowledge exchange, uh, set up a small feasibility uh, style project, knowledge exchange in all the area of research, all the key applications such as barrier membrane and advanced composite. So, I'm the person to contact if you want to set up a project or just want to, to discuss with academic to see if graphene uh, can benefit your product, your application, your technology. I'm really open to, um, to, to really organize meeting and you can come and visit the institute. So it's my pleasure to welcome you to just contact me and I can arrange that. So we have some industry partners. We have a strategic partnership. Strategic partnership is a stronger partnership you can have with the university, with the institute. So basically, those two companies have invested millions in, in several projects, looking at several uh, area of application and working end to end with the Nobel Prize laureates, partly, and other academics. So they have full access to the expertise, the knowledge, and they can exploit it for new products. So this is the strongest uh, partnership. Obviously, most of the company working with us work on specific projects. So with different amount of investment, it can be small investment to large investment. So this is the company working with us on membrane projects. Okay. Yeah. And then um, energy storage, so more company um, and other uh, projects, other applications. So you can see we work with a broad range of company, uh, large and small. And to finish my talk, I'm going <laughs> to end with that specific application of graphene. Um, so there is a group in Manchester, a group of researchers, been awarded to develop uh, graphene-based condoms. And it's um, the Bill Gates, Bill and Melissa Gates um, institution in the US that awarded that uh, project to basically develop new condoms with stronger and better mechanical uh, properties 
uh, it's more to, de to, to encourage basically people to use condoms and limit the spread of AIDS and other STDs. And on that thought, <laughs> thank you for your, for your attention. Thank you.